Hello! I'm Julia, welcome to my garden. We've had some pretty rubbish weather. Lots and lots of rain. It's been the theme for this year up here. Lots of rain. But it's not stopping things progressing. Every now and again I've not had time to film because of the rain. So I've just had to shoot out in between rainstorms, get things going. So I've got my first lot of garlic in. And they're up and through and they're about the shoots are about that big now. And my broad beans are up. They've been in these pots for about two weeks. Um, they are Aqua Dulce Claudia, I think. Oh, here we are. <laughs> yep, Aqua Dulce Claudia. So I'm going to move them out of the shed and into the greenhouse for just for um, a week or so. Let them all come through and establish properly, and then I've already got a bed prepared for them to go into. It'll be a bit of a tight squeeze, mind. I'm not putting them in a big bed this year. <laughs> we'll see how they go. I've got, I think I've probably got about six pots that I've already moved through into the greenhouse, and 23 pots in here. So that's okay. Uh, and there's two pots that have not come through. Oh no, that one has now. Oh, look, just poking its little head. Never give up. This one, we seem to have some seedage in this compost I used. This is the only pot then that is currently showing no signs of life. Everything else I've either got one or two. I put two seeds to each pot. Most of them have come through as twos. A couple have come through as ones. But that's okay. That means we're going to have plenty of broad beans. Cool. So that's um, at this time of year when everything around you garden wise is dying off it is actually pretty good to have something new life going in so my plan today is move all of these through to the greenhouse because I'll get more light in there um, string mat onions I've never done that before and I've just been brushing up by watching Jane Kelly's method of stringing them so I'm going to do that today you can have a laugh and watch me do that <laughs> And then if I get the chance, if the weather doesn't close in, because we are supposed to get quite a lot of rain today, uh, if I get the chance, I've already, we did the bed, I'll probably have to do it again, because to be honest it's been a couple of weeks since I redid that bed, um, and I've chopped and dropped the crops that were in there before, and I want to spread some compost over the top of that and get some more garlic in the ground. So that's the plan. Oh, and I've got some onion seedlings as well that need to go in. I'll concentrate on getting the garlic in, I think, because the seedlings are already going so they're fine as they are for now. Right, let's get on with the... I'm going to move these first. I'll be back. Okay, let's get into this, shall we? As I said, I've been on Jane Kelly's channel this morning just to double check what to do. Because it has been a year since I've watched her blog. So I've got a doubled up piece of string. About 18 inches long. I'm going to go with whatever Jane says. I'm going to attempt to cut them with this pair of secateurs. Which is easier said than done because they're the old rubbishy ones. Because I've put my new ones down somewhere and I can't find them. And hang a knot in the end to make a loop. I which I am going to hang on my S hook. So I'm going to start this off here and then we'll have a little adjustment of the camera. All right I suppose first up I should say I'm going to check that they're ready and they are. You can feel there's just nothing left in here anymore. I'm just going to take any loose debris off. I'm not doing too much. Is that right or is that wrong? I don't know. Never done this before. And I'm going to trim now these off. Which again, easy said than done when you stick it as a blunt. Okay. So, Jane says, first of all, twist it. So you've got a second. <laughs> here we go already. Okay. Twist it. So you've got a second loop, loop down here. Pull it up and pull that one through. Safari's a goodie. 
Ooh, that should be trimmed as well, I suppose. I'll do that in a second. Bear with me. Let's get this guy locked on first. So, put that through. I'm going to put it through twice because it is the base one. Ta-da! Okay. I really need to find my good secateurs. Oh, I wonder if these little ones will work better. I don't it. They're very stiff for some reason. Don't know why. The oil on them would be good, I suppose. No, they're not going <laughs> to. Okay. I'm just checking each of them as I go. Just to make sure there's no mould or anything growing on them. Anything dubious. And I'm just literally just brushing off by hand the dirt and if there's any loose bits of this outer skin I'll take that off but I'm not doing much at all. Uh -huh. Although it might be a struggle, these ones are going to be better I think. Okay, so I've just already trimmed the roots and the top down a little. So now I'm going to go according to Jane with my onion upside down through the middle twist it around the string and then bring it down and apparently that will lock it in apparently it did <laughs> i can't believe this is going to work well it might work it might not do i'm going to leave my bits a bit these bits a little bit longer than that one there because that was a bit short does it really feel there we go Right. Oh, the things we do for our onions. I'm just checking that there's no damage to them because I'm just wanting to store the perfect ones. And because then they'll keep better. The ones that are not quite, hello, <laughs> the ones that are not quite perfect. We'll just go straight in for immediate use. And I have to admit, we've already been using these onions. There are nowhere near as many here as there were when I picked them. And they are very good. Just the right amount of potency. Onion upside down, through the middle. Twist it around and under. And then drop it down. Look at that, Jane, you're a genius, miss. Thank you. Really, I should have prepared all my onions first, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. Oh. This is gonna take a little while. I'm gonna film a little bit more while I do it. I'll probably just chat as I go. And if I come out with any like, you know, gems of wonderfulness, <laughs> wisdom, me, wisdom. With any gems of wisdom, I'll be sure to share them as we go. My first gem of wisdom was be make sure your secateurs are oiled because these ones are very, very stiff. My second gem of wisdom would be don't cut this bit too short, it will hinder you if you do. Upside down, through the middle, twist it around. And drop it down into a gap. <gasps> Look at that, it's the beginnings of an onion stringing. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Definitely prepare, if you've got a video of this, <laughs> definitely prepare your onions first. They are looking mighty fine. Well, I know they're mighty fine because I've been eating them. <sighs> okay. So we've done that one last, so we'll do this one here next. Upside down, twist it around and drop the onion down into the gap. I am so excited that this thing is working. No doubt at some point I'm going to find a monkey onion in here. I'm going to bring a few down and I don't keep reaching pasture. I'm doing this stringing and sorting and cleaning actually it's really quite nice to do 
because I'm remembering the day that I took these onions out of the ground and I was so excited because they are the best onions I've ever grown. I know that some of you are mini school, school, but to me they're a wonderful harvest and proof to me as well that the steps I've been taking to improve the soil here are actually working. Where's it going to go? It's going to go down there I think. Ooh, that one didn't win quite so well. Bear with me because I've got it. Come at it from the wrong place. There we go. Let's do it from here. Whoop, round, under, and down. When I first came here and we made those beds, the soil that was in there was literally just pure compost, shop bought compost because I didn't have compost here. I didn't even have the beds here when I moved here, which was just a little over two years ago now. Um, so all the compost that went into the beds when I made raised beds um, was just a well-known DIY store with a big orange sign with two letters to its name and an and sign. Um, it's just the cheap compost because I needed it just to fill the beds, get started, get something growing. So it wasn't the greatest of quality. I would admit first hand that, that was not the greatest of quality compost to use. But it got my beds filled and it got me growing stuff. We've got a gap here. Look, I'm going to fill this gap next with this magnificent beastie. Um, well, ever since then I've been improving it. My horse has contributed quite a substantial amount to this garden. <laughs> I made compost last year. Um, I've been using chicken manure pellets and um, fish blood and bone. I've been chopping and dropping last year's crops. I've chopped and dropped this year's crops. Um, leaves, I've raked them up from the ground and put them directly in the beds last year. I'm going to do the same this year because it worked really well. Um, they went onto the big new bed last year. They did work really well. They worked. I was about to say keep the weeds down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Didn't quite do that. It's quite a weedy bed still, but I want to get this bit off. Yeah, it's fine. Nice onion. Okay, just get rub dirt off it. It's nice and clean for going in the house. Right, we'll fill in that gap up next, aren't we? Ta da! Round and again. Uh, so my point was <laughs> that all the measures that I am taking, I'm making liquid feeds, I've got some comfrey planted and I do tend to just take the leaves off and um, drop them on the ground sometimes or make them into tea. I make nettle tea so constantly trying to improve the soil and this year's onion harvest and garlic harvest oh my god that was brilliant <laughs> it still is brilliant so I'm eating them uh, and it will be brilliant again next year I'm sure just go to show my point being <laughs> again that if you improve the soil your crops will improve look after the soil and the soil will look after your plants, and then the plants will look after you. Well, sort of. They'll look after themselves at any rate. Another one. I am finding that holding it about fists, distance away, is about right. And where's my gap? I think we'll pop it on this one again. Mm. Around and down. <laughs> trying to keep that knot at the top. It's a balance of your onion string. I am finding anyway that that's it's quite useful for that. Uh, it's starting to rain. That means unless it holds off again this afternoon, that garlic won't be getting planted today. I'm bothering the shed to be honest and I'm not halfway through the job. 
I'm not going to stress about it. I've still got time to get the garlic in and where, it go, where it's going will be fine for it to stay for as long as it needs. I think quite as nice as cooking with your own. I am giving them quite a good inspection while I'm doing this because I don't want any rotten onions setting the whole lot off because they will make everything else rot. So I think the attic is going to be the best place for these. It's cool, it's dry, it's dark. It's easily accessed for us. We go up there almost every day, really, I suppose. There's usually something up there that one is needed. <laughs> Dog's chasing something. At least it's not the postman today, like it was last time. <laughs> Ian knows him well enough. He knows it's all excitement. Oh no, it wasn't the postman, was it? It was the other two dogs, the two collies. He loves them. Here I go again. Here I go again. Ooh, no, that one's not going on. That's a shame, because that's a good onion. I can freeze them as well, the ones that are not going on the string, so I'll just chop out, I'll chop out the bit that is not usable and I'll um, stick them in bags and stick them in the freezer. Ready chopped onions. Very convenient. Nothing wrong with convenience food, especially when you've grown it yourself or cooked it yourself. It'll be quite nice to take these into the house today. I feel like a long awaited harvest is coming home. <laughs> Weird. I know. I'm odd. After my disappointment with my sweet corn earlier this year, at least I can grow an onion. I'll tell you what else I can grow. I'm not showing you yet, but I will. Damn, this girl can grow a parsnip. <laughs> Oh hell yeah, they're magnificent. I'll have to find the label for them though so that I can tell you accurately what variety they are. They're not long, but they are magnificent. They'll have that upcoming soon, the parsnip thing. I've had about six out of the bed so far. All being perfect, all being delicious. I'll be absolutely blinking massive. I think for a Christmas dinner to do roast parsnips. Oh yeah, that one's mushy. For how many people? Well, phew. yeah, no, it was supposed to be a really big Christmas dinner, but it's not going to be this year now, is it? Let's face it. It is going to be what it is going to be. Um, I reckon if everybody were to have come, been able to come as they were going to for Christmas dinner, there would have been about 10 of us, 12. It's going to be three or four, I think now. Bloody Covid to bog off. Let us get back to our lives. Anyway. Enough of that. Um, I probably would have needed three parsnips to do enough for ten people. <laughs> Seriously, they're huge. 
which I'm very pleased about, especially since I've already taken the decision that that bed is going to be um, all parsnips next year because they've grown so well in there. The carrots did okay, but not, they didn't get to any, oh God, anywhere near the length that I'd hoped that they would do in there. But that's not a problem because they were still really good carrots. Um, they just don't need that bed. I can grow them quite successfully in one of the other beds. Actually, I am raising one of the other beds, so it will be, it will actually be double the depth that it is at the moment, which will bring it to approximately the depth of the other one. So they're going to grow in that, and it's bigger. It'll be double, it'll be the same depth as the other one, and it will be um, twice as big, so more carrots. So you do use a lot of carrots, like we like onions. <laughs> These have been hanging in here for quite a long time, haven't they? Probably less than longer than I should have done, to be honest. They probably should have been in, in the attic a long time ago. But you know, as I said on my last video, me and Mo and Joe parted company for a little while though. <laughs> but we're back together. It's helped getting um, some things in the ground. And seeing things start coming up again always oh, helps that doesn't it i think i'll actually end up with probably it depends on the quality of those ones that are in the back it can either be three strings which is this one and the other two that i've already done or it might be four strings depends on like i said the quality of the onions that are left in a state of preservation. I can't remember when I got these out of the ground now. I'll pop it up somewhere. <laughs> when I got them out. I've still got a few tomato plants growing in the greenhouse. It's been... Touch some wood. Relatively mild so far this autumn, apart from we had one or two cold nights, but it was warm enough in the daytime for the temperature to get up in the greenhouse, which allowed most plants to stay in there until now. Really? So that's been good, still harvesting fresh tomatoes. On the 20th. I'm actually going to harvest a few today. I am still. That's one for freezing. Still harvesting fresh tomatoes. Well, may it continue. Although we are going to need, at some point, some consistently cold weather to get those garlics to split that are in the ground. didn't have quite enough onions left to make a fourth string so what I decided to do was add the remaining 12 I just spread them out between these three so I've got three strings of about 20-ish onions and then I've got probably about 10 that I'm going to take in and process and get down in the freezer or use tonight in the fabled fabled cottage pie and I enjoyed stringing the onions so much I decided to do the shallots as well. So that's all the oniony stuff, all my alliums cleared from in here. That was quite a lot of fun doing that. It feels really good to have my onions all strung up and ready to go in. Uh, they're coming in now with me. I'm going to have a quick tidy up in here. And I'm going to go in and get some lunch, probably some cheese and onion on toast. <laughs> Okay, I would like to say thank you very much to everyone who's watched, sat through this epic onion stringing saga. Uh, I've got an onion strung. <laughs> thank you for watching. It's been my pleasure as always. 
I hope I'll see you again next time for garlic planting, onion seedling planting and a look at my parsnips. Thanks for watching. It's been my pleasure. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.